What's up guys? Welcome to another video brought to you by The Simple Engineer. Today we are going to be delving into a new topic, uh, a new series. It's going to be about the theory of computation. Uh, today is going to be pretty much an introductory lesson uh, for understanding a lot of the core ideas that we're going to be tackling. Um, so I'm going to start off with um, introducing the idea of uh, finite automata, uh, DFAs, and state diagrams. Um, so just to talk about uh, finite automata, um, you'll hear that a lot and you'll also see DFA a lot, which is an acronym for deterministic finite automata. Um, and they're typically represented by uh, a bunch of circles, right, and a bunch of transitions with arrows. So this is this is typically what you'll see. Um, and really, more simply, this is this is what a state diagram is, right? So it's a bunch of nodes, and there's different ways to get from, say, node one to node two on some input. Uh, and we'll look at an example for that. But what this is in real life. Um, it's really just a way to represent realistically what computers with small amounts of memory can actually do. Um, and there's a lot of things today that don't have 16 gigabytes of RAM or 16 gigabytes of memory um, available, right? And this is, this is things like smartwatches, uh, cell phones. I know cell phones have a lot of memory these days, but um, basic you know, uh, devices that are very small, like your alarm clock. So there's not a, a lot of memory in these things. So deterministic finite automata, automatas or state machines um, can be represented like this are, are very useful. So we'll look at a practical application for this. Um, and it can be something like your remote. So um, when you're sitting at TV or you're watching something on, say, Netflix, we'll have a state, right? And this state will be called plane. And in addition to this state, we have something called paused. And we'll have a node that's called stop. So these are what we call states in the uh, state diagram. Okay. So if we're in plane and we press pause, then it's obviously going to pause. And if we press play, it's going to play. So as you see, I mean, this is a very trivial example. Um, which is, which is really what we need to address to fully understand the more difficult concepts. So, okay, so this is, you know, a, a pretty basic um, state diagram for showing, okay, if I'm in some state plane and I put in some uh, transition that's within the language, where is it going to go, right? So we have uh, states, transitions, etc. This is what a state diagram basically is. Uh, so they're denoted by some variable m typically. So let's call this state diagram here of uh, the Netflix state diagram. We'll just denote this by n, right? So we'll say n equals the state diagram. Um, it contains states, which are these nodes here. And they can be represented, they're typically represented as circles. Um, people call them nodes, states, circles, uh, whatever you want, but what they really are, they're states. Um, and then we have transitions. So the transitions are represented by these arrows. And what these arrows say is they say, okay, if I'm in one state and I want to get to another state, A, is it possible for me to get from one state to the next? And B, if it is possible, what do I have to feed into that state to be able to traverse from say plane to pause. I cannot go from plane to pause if I press the stop button, right? I can only go to stop if I press the stop button. So that's what these transitions do. They allow us to see clearly um, what transitions I'm able to make within the language or the machine described. So uh, we basically say that N is a machine that contains states and transitions and the language that it recognizes is the language in which these transitions follow from one state to the next. Uh, we also have something called a start state. So in a lot of the deterministic finite automatas, which are uh, more advanced state diagrams with languages, 
which we'll get into um, in probably the next video, um, is there's a start state. So uh, in another example, and I'll just do something that we'll probably see more often within this series, um, is we have some basic nodes. So we have a circle here, 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 um, with some transitions like we saw previously. Um, and we have a start state. So let's denote the start state by S. Typically, uh, what you'll see in DFAs or deterministic finite automata are arrows pointing to the start state. And this tells you, the reader, look, this is where I start reading input into my machine. Um, and you always start here. You can't start at any arbitrary node within the system. So that's what we mean by a start state. Uh, the final thing that we have is a final state or an acceptance state. And this is saying, okay, if I've fully read my input, is it valid? Do we have a valid machine? Okay, so let's say that our machine can accept the string one, one, right? So if my transition here is one, one, then we've accepted it. So if we accept any string into our machine that is the string one, one, then we're going to accept it into this final state. So that's what this means when we have a acceptance state. If we fed in one, zero, one, zero, there is no zero transition. And even if there was a zero transition, say the zero transition was pointing back to the start state, it would never reach this final state. So it would not be accepting. It would basically uh, go back to the start state um, and we can never accept anything with zero, right? Unless we fed in, in this case, um, this would it, this would basically accept any substring that contains one one at this point. So we could feed in uh, one zero one one, and this would be accepting because we go one and we trace it back to zero, and we could put one one, and we would finally accept. So this is what the final state is basically saying. So this was a very basic introductory idea. Um, it may seem confusing uh, to begin with, but what I'm going to do is in the next video, I'm gonna walk through kind of a more formal definition. I'm gonna now introduce the idea of a deterministic finite automata, or as you see here, a DFA. I'm gonna talk about the formal um, explanation what DFAs need to consist of and how to use them for the application of examples that we'll walk through in more complex problems. So stay tuned and I look forward to seeing the rest of you guys.